Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast. I'm on the bridge of RS Discovery. I'm joined by the captain of RS Discovery, Captain Antonio Gatti. Thank you, Antonio. Thanks for joining me. Oh, welcome aboard and uh, nice to have you here. Right, so obviously it's very cool to say, you know, you're captain of a research ship. Do you want to tell us a bit of sort of how you got to be captain, maybe how long you've been captain of the ship? Sure, yeah, I've been captain on Discovery since uh, we took over the ship from the shipyard in 2013. So the last 10, 10 years since build, I've been captain on Discovery. Prior to that, I was captain on the previous Discovery and also James Cook. I uh, came across to NOC from British Antarctic Survey in 2005 and I'd been with the British Antarctic Survey about 13 years as well, finishing up as captain on the RRS and Shackleton. So, been captain for quite a while yeah. and uh, the last 10 years on uh, this great ship. So, what's, what, what are the sort of main responsibilities of being a, a captain of a ship? Obviously, I know it's probably quite a big question because you know, you're basically in charge of all of it, but what, what's sort of the main responsibility? Sure. That's, the main responsibility of a captain, and certainly on these ships, is the overall safety of the people on board. It's my responsibility to make sure everybody comes on board, they're well received, looked after, through my heads of department, but it is their safety of the scientists, the technical staff, and also the ship's crew while we're sailing around the oceans. That's my number one responsibility. After that, we, ha we have our responsibility towards the science, the work, ensuring what the scientists want to do, we can do, in a safe manner, but also in a productive manner as well. All right, so, I mean, it's, it, this might be a hard question to answer, but how many, do you, do you have a sort of rough number of how many expeditions you've been on, in on Discovery? Not really, but I suppose if, uh, if we think I maybe do three to four, maybe five short expeditions per year, and so for the last 10 years, up to 40, 50 expeditions, right. something like that, uh, they vary in length from a couple of weeks up to six weeks, so six weeks plus. So it does vary depending where we're working, the kind of work we're doing. But it's probably in the order of that, yeah. Right. right. So you must have seen some amazing places then being captain. Yeah, I've been very lucky, very fortunate. We, uh, with these ships, with the scientists, we sail all over the world. It's not just uh, UK based science or close to the uh, United Kingdom, it's all over the world. So just this last year, we were working in the no northern polar regions in the the North Polar area and also in the Southern Polar regions as well. So we w worked from top to bottom on the globe, uh, crossing both polar circles in one year. Uh, we've also been in South America in the last year on Discovery. We've worked in Africa, we've worked in the Southern Pacific Ocean. So we do get all over the place. How so many places you've not seen then? Probably not. We're, we're still waiting to go out to the Far East and perhaps Australia on these ships. But um, yeah, we do travel around quite a lot down to the ice front and the ice edges north and south but also working in the tropical regions as well, in the Caribbean, Bahamas, those areas too. Would you say you have a favourite? It's very difficult. I, uh, I like travelling. I like the various ports we go around. Personally, I like South America. It's just something I've liked over the years. But no, it's just nice to visit uh, new places, new ports. And if we're doing something different, something that we haven't done before, it just makes everything that bit more special and uh, everybody appreciates the opportunity to go to these places. That's really cool. I'm really jealous. Um, so. Discovery is a real research ship. Do you want to tell us a bit about the ship itself? So sort of maybe some... Sure, the ship, like I say, it was built uh, by the Freire shipyard in Vigo. Uh, we took delivery in July 2013, and we've been on the go since 2013, really, with scientific expeditions all over the world, as I said previously. Uh, we haven't really stopped in that time. COVID gave us a little break, um, but we managed to keep going during COVID the majority of the time. There was only one short period in the summer where we didn't do actually any science but the rest of the time we kept going through covid reduced numbers distancing on board isolation on board quarantine on board but we managed to keep the science going so discovery throughout that time still supported all the science the uh, the majority or what science we could do at the time the ship itself were 100 meters long uh, 18 meters wide and we have a nominal draft working draft of around uh, six and a half meters, 6.6 .6 meters. We sort of travel around the oceans at around 10 knots, which is about 20 kilometers right. an hour. So it doesn't sound very fast, but it is economic. It's yeah. good on the fuel and uh, time is allowed. Uh, we plot our way from A to B. Yeah. Uh, it's good for the science that way when we're take, uh, taking measurements, data. So um, a trip, for example, from the UK down to the Falklands or the Southern Ocean would take four weeks. Um, across to the, to the America, to the States, maybe a couple of weeks, that kind of thing. So it gives you an idea 
of the kind of uh, speeds we're travelling at. We have uh, 22 crew on board, officers and crew, and we can take up to 32 scientists and technicians. So when we're full, we're 54. It, it varies uh, from cruise to cruise, expedition to expedition, about the amount of people we have on board. But if we were full, it would be 54. Right. And we have a normal endurance, fuel, provision space, provision supplies for about 50 days. Right. Although most expeditions are maximum around six weeks, maybe just over the six week mark. Right. I'm sure a lot of our listeners just kind of want to get an idea as to what it's like being on an expedition, like being at sea, and especially as captain, you know, obviously, do you have layovers and things like that, so you swap over crew? Yeah, so we work uh, on, a, on a, a rotor between two crews on Discovery. There's myself and the other captain, Stuart Mackay. Yeah. Um, we, we work more or less two months on and then two months off, or one long expedition, two short expeditions, depending. Everything's based, it's not a fixed date when we crew change or when we change, it's all based around the, uh, the program of the ship, so it's all yeah. based around the science depending where she's working, which port we want to crew change in, uh, flight time, things like that are taken into account as well. So what's it, what's it like on board on, during an expedition? I can imagine like, if there's a lot of science going on. It's sure, it, 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 it can be very busy, very yeah. tiring, because we, we try and work 24 hours a day. Yeah. It, it's not a cheap thing to send a scientific vessel uh, to sea and with all the scientists, and they, I wouldn't say they fight for their sea time, but they have to jump through a lot of hoops before they're given sea time. Yeah. So it's important we do maximize the time that we're at sea for the science. But it's good fun as well. There's, there's good comradeship on board. There's great relationships between the ship staff, technicians, and scientists. And the good thing about it for my behalf is I've been at sea so long, I first came to sea in 1984, is these, these expeditions, they're different every time. Uh, depending on the science you're doing, the discipline you're doing, where you're working, the people are different every time. So every trip there's something new that crops up, perhaps that you haven't seen before. So really interesting and really fulfilling. Yeah, I assume you must have seen a lot of people sort of come off and on, and, and sure. I assume a lot of scientists will come. Quite often you see a lot of faces you know before. Yeah. A little bit embarrassing at times. People will come up and say, hello, Antonio. And I'm thinking, yeah, I know the face, but the name, uh, it will come to me. Yeah. But uh, no, no, it's, it's good meeting the new people. and. We have the old sea dogs, as you might call them, the older scientists who've been around. We have some uh, first timers, young students as well that come away to sea. So you get a real mix and people from all over the world as well. So you get a mix of nationalities, which yeah. really works well on a scientific yeah. research ship. That's really cool. Yeah, I can imagine the first time, the first expedition anyone ever goes on must be such an incredible experience. I think so. Yeah, because it's probably something, OK, they, they will have heard about expeditions, yeah. but they have an experience themselves and we do have routines. We have a way of doing things that have developed over the year. It can be quite regimented, but at the same time, it is quite fun for them as well, the work, and it really gets them to, to where they need to be to see yeah. science in the ocean. Yeah. So you may not be able to tell for, from this, but the ship is actually in dry dock at the moment in Scotland. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about sort of how the refit of this ship works and sort of what's, what's going on? Sure. So. Uh, this ship, James Cook, David Attenborough, most ships really will have an annual refit period. Uh, not necessarily in dry dock every time. What happens is um, our classification uh, society, Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London, uh, they're responsible for making ship, basically the ship safe to go to sea. So they, they will be looking at things like stability, hull integrity, low light, construction, safety equipment, uh, tanks, ballast, fuel, lube oil type of tanks. So they, they're looking at uh, an overall survey of the ship. So if you like, we have an equivalent of an MOT annually, where certificates are stamped each year, just checked. Then every five years, it, we have to go what's called a special refit, special dry docking. So the ship will dry dock, and, the, and the, then the servers are much more involved, and there's much more to look at. But it's all to do with ensuring the ship is basically safe to go to sea. So this has been the 10 years old now, Discovery, our second five-year period. So we're in dry dock here up in uh, the Babcock shipyard in Rosyth, Scotland, uh, out of the water and uh, going through our 10 year survey. Right. Lucky enough to sort of see it, see it in dry dock and see sort of the new sort of bit of paint it's getting and things like that. It's really interesting. So the, the paint, I just wanted to ask about the paint. Sure. So the red paint on the bottom, that's self cleaning. I'd yeah, that's right. Yeah. It. So self cleaning, self polishing paint. So it's what we call a anti fouling paint. It also prevents growth on the hull, which would uh, being in the water all the time. Natural marine growth does occur. This this paint prevents it. And 
they, if we had a lot of growth on their speed, fuel efficiency, all, all like that would be affected. So this just ma maintains the whole uh, to an optimum uh, service, yeah. service servability. But um, we last time we painted it fully was five years ago oh. in the Durban when we were in Durban for a dry dock, and the condition was very good. Uh, we've just had to do minimum touch up and then we will do a, a one top coat as well. Yeah. So it's one of those things you never really think about when you see a ship like this, that sure. the paint underneath is like... So this will be the same for every ship in the world. Yeah. We'll have to go through this kind of uh, process really to make sure yeah. the hull's kept clean. Yeah. And also being in dry dock gives us access to parts of the ship underneath the ship. Uh, we have technicians here from NMF looking at the underwater scientific yeah. equipment the multi-beam echo sounder, the arrays, the sensors for the ship as well. So we have access to them for maintenance. Same with the underwater propulsion, the thrusters as well. Yeah. So we have quite a few contractors looking at that. So you have to have the ship out of the water to have the access. And this is a perfect op opportunity. Yeah. So what's next once the dry dock ends? It goes, I understand it goes out for sea trials? Yeah, so with the generators being pulled apart and maintained, overhaul, same with the thrusters, we need to ensure the ship's okay. Yeah. So uh, there'll be a process of flooding up, uh, flooding up the dry dock, so the ship will be put afloat yeah. again. And then about 10 days later, we think it'll be about 10 days later, once the work's finished, the ship will be actually leaving the, the refit yard. We'll have to take fuel. We're very light on fuel at the moment. And then she has a few days of just putting the ship through her paces, making sure everything that's been done, all the all overhauls has been successful and everything's working okay. Right, and then it'll go to Dundee, won't it? Yes, that's another exciting thing for the ship. So we're up in Dundee for the first weekend in June. It's uh, 100 years anniversary of the, the first discovery of this, yeah. um, of this line of research vessels, really all the way back to Captain Scott's discovery in the 1920s. So uh, it's a great opportunity and um, great chance to have the latest discovery and the first one together in Dundee uh, by the Heritage Centre. So there are various events planned, school visits, public visits, uh, similar to what we did in London under, alongside Belfast and also in Liverpool as well. So it's a good chance for us to get out there and show the public what's happening with marine science and how NMF are at the forefront of that. Yeah, it'll be great to see them two together as well. Yeah, sure. So it's a great opportunity. I think when it, it's something that's come about fairly quickly, really. It wasn't planned for a long yeah. time. And, but soon as uh, the possibility was there, and especially being the 100th anniversary, it was something that was taken on board and it's rolling along really quickly now. Yeah, yeah we wish you good luck with the refit um, and good luck in future expedition. Absolute pleasure having you. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks very much. Come again. Thank you.